Hello, we're going to continue talking about the muscular system, um, still in support systems. This time we're going to talk about types of muscle tissue. So there are three muscle tissue types. These are, this is the beginning of our structures of the muscular system discussion. So we talked already about the functions of the muscular system, but now we wanna talk about the structures. So the things that the muscles, muscular system is made of. So we need to know th the three types of muscle tissue. Not all muscles in the body are the same. So first we have skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, and then smooth muscle, which is also called visceral muscle. Visceral means pertaining to the internal organs. So you're gonna find these muscles in your internal organs. All right, let's start with skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is exactly what it sounds like. It is going to be found attached to bones. So for each muscle tissue type, we're gonna learn where you find it, so location, and then you're gonna learn what kind of control it's under, and I'll talk about that more in a second, and then you'll learn some examples. So, oh, and appearance. So the appearance of skeletal muscle is it is striated. If you can look at the background of this slide, you can see that there are these long stripes on the muscle tissue. Now, that's not actually what striated means. Skeletal muscles are very organized, so they do have those long lines in them, but the striated part of the skeletal muscle is microscopic. You can't see it just looking at a muscle. So I'm gonna show you an image of it later, but just know it means striped. So it looks like it has stripes under a microscope. Control means, is it voluntary or involuntary? Do we get to choose what we do with these muscles or is it completely under unconscious control where our brain is controlling it, but we can't voluntarily choose to contract the muscle? So for skeletal muscles, what do you think? Do you get to consciously control your skeletal muscles? Is it voluntary or does it just happen on its own? So if you guessed that it is voluntary, you are correct. Even though you don't consciously think about using your skeletal muscles, like when you're walking or, or talking or, or running or doing anything, you're not consciously thinking, okay, bicep contract, tricep relax. You don't have to think about each action, luckily, or we'd never do anything, but it is voluntary. So if I think I want to move my arm, I can then move my arm. So it doesn't mean you're thinking about it all the time, but it means that you can choose to contract that muscle or not. Sometimes those muscles contract on their own, like when you have a spasm, but it's still considered voluntary muscle. Here's an example of skeletal muscle attached to a bone so our skeleton or our muscle has to attach to the bone so that our skeleton can move. Um, it is attached by a tendon. Tendon is a type of connective tissue that attaches muscle to bone. And then you can see that the structure of the skeletal muscle is pretty organized. It's like all these tubes coming together and they're bundled together into this very organized shape. When you eat a piece of meat like steak or hamburger or a chicken breast, this is what you're eating. You are eating the muscle, the skeletal muscle of that animal. Now, skeletal muscle is made up of tiny little muscle cells called cell muscle fibers, and they're very long and skinny, like a, like a piece of spaghetti that hasn't been cooked. And so it's really organized tissue. Now, here's what I was talking about with the striated appearance. So this is a super, super zoomed in microscopic view of this muscle, the skeletal muscle I just showed you. So you can see there's these little stripes and this is one single muscle fiber or muscle cell. And then you've got these stripes going through it. This, these stripes are called sarcomeres and you don't need to remember that. You'll learn about it in anatomy next year, but sarcomeres are the parts of the muscle that actually contract. The sarcomeres pull closer together and that shortens the muscle causing a contraction which causes movement. Our next category is smooth muscle. So smooth muscle is called smooth muscle because, uh, well, I'll tell you in just a second. <laughs> uh, it's found in the walls of hollow internal structures. Try to remember back from our functions video where you'd find hollow internal structures. 
So it's our blood vessels, veins and arteries. It's your stomach, your urinary bladder, your intestines, both large and small. So the appearance of smooth muscle is exactly what it says it is. It's smooth. It doesn't have that striated, stripy appearance. So when you look at it under a microscope, it doesn't have those nice stripy lines. Because of that, it allows smooth muscle, muscle to be very elastic. So it's kind of like a balloon and you can ex, it can stretch really, really far and then return to its original shape. That's what elastic means. It's not just that it can stretch, it's that it returns to its original shape. So keep in mind though, just like with a balloon or a rubber band, if you stretch it out too much, if you stretch it out too far and too often, it will never go back to its perfect original shape. So we gotta be really nice to our smooth muscle. So things like high blood pressure can cause your blood vessels to get overstretched and then they won't fully contract back down to the way they're supposed to be. Or your urinary bladder, if for decades, like years and years and years and years at a time when you're older, if you don't empty your bladder often enough, you might find that your bladder gets a little stretched out and it won't con contract back down and empty very well. And finally, smooth muscle, I want you to think about what type of control it's under. Do you get to choose, like, I want my blood vessels to constrict. Do you get to choose that? Do you get to choose when your intestines contract so you digest food? You may feel like you have a choice with your urinary bladder because you think, oh yeah, when I decide I want to pee, I pee. However, the bladder itself contracts on its own. So, Smooth muscle is under involuntary control. So when you need to go to the bathroom, the only muscle you have control over is called a sphincter. You have an external sphincter that you can squeeze to keep urine in your bladder. But once your brain gets the signal of, oh, your bladder is too full, it will start sending messages to your bladder to start contracting. And you know when you have to go really, really bad and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can hold it anymore. And you feel like kind of this pain in your lower stomach. That's because your bladder is contracting and you don't have control over that. That is also your sign that your body really, 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 really needs you to go to the bathroom and you need to listen to it. Because I promise you, I worked in a clinic for a while at the U that dealt with issues with the bladder. You do not want to mess with your bladder because you want it to be your friend for the rest of your life. So listen to it when it says you need to go. All right, this is what smooth muscle tissue looks like. You can see it's much, it looks a lot more disorganized than the skeletal muscle. Um, this tissue right here is an example from your stomach. This right here is an example from your eyes the muscle that pulls on the lens of your eye to focus light so you can see. And these smooth muscle cells look kind of, they're kind of like a spindle shape. Um, I don't know how, what else to call it, but it's kind of narrow at the ends and bigger in the middle and they can pull out, they can stretch out really, really thin and then they can kind of squish down as well. This is a microscopic view of the smooth muscle tissue, and it just looks a lot less organized than that nice stripey skeletal muscle, but it allows for a lot stretchier um, movements of the smooth muscle. This is an example of smooth muscle at work. This is called peristalsis. Um, the peristalsis is the rhythmic contraction of your intestinal tract all the way from your esophagus to your stomach, small intestines, large intestines, and it's what propels food through your digestive tract. So that rhythmic contraction, it happens in a circular way as, as it contracts down the tube, it forces the food to move to the next portion, and that's called peristalsis, and that's an example of smooth muscle contraction. Next is cardiac muscle. Cardi means heart. So cardiac muscle is going to be found in the walls of the heart. The heart is made up of cardiac muscle. It's only found in the heart. That's the only place you'll find this type of muscle. The appearance of cardiac muscle is kind of like skeletal muscle. It's striated, but it looks a little bit different because it has these branching portions. And I'll show you a picture in just a minute. 
It also has something called intercalated discs. I need you to remember this. This is something very important about cardiac muscle. You don't need to fully understand it yet. You'll learn more about it as we get into the cardiovascular system and when you take anatomy next year. But these intercalated discs strengthen your cardiac muscle tissue. So there are these little discs found between the cardiac muscle cells and it helps the, the heart work more effectively. Your heart has to pump and beat every day, all day for your entire life. So those muscle cells have to work really, really well. All right, controlled, you get to control your cardiac muscle. Now, can you influence your heart rate? Yes, you can. If my heart's beating really fast and I wanna slow it down, I can do deep breathing and relax. If my heart's beating slow and I want it to speed up, I can run, but I don't have conscious control over the muscle itself. It is involuntary or automatic. Luckily it is because if you weren't paying attention, you could potentially stop you could forget to have your heart beat and then you would not be alive anymore. So it's a good thing it is involuntary. This is what cardiac muscle tissue looks like. So you've got the stripes like we did, we did in skeletal muscle, but it also branches. So it's not just this really organized, everything's kind of bundled together. Instead, you have these branching parts and that's because a, car a cardiac muscle needs to squeeze. Your heart is four empty chambers, four empty rooms, and those room, the walls of those rooms are made up of cardiac muscle. And as that cardiac, cardiac muscle contracts, it pushes blood out of those rooms. So you need a nice squeeze, not just a shortening to pull a bone. So that's why your cardiac muscle looks like that. Here is an actual microscopic view of cardiac muscle. It's kind of hard to see the striations here. They would be running up and down on this cardiac muscle cell, but you can see the branching here. Um, and that's how cardiac muscle appears under a microscope. This image shows the three types of muscle tissue uh, side by side so you can compare them. So here's our skeletal muscle. You've got these nice smooth, or not smooth, these nice uh, organized striations, and then the muscle fibers themselves are very organized and bundled together. Smooth muscle, no striations, and it's a little less organized. Cardiac muscle, you have those striations, but you've also got the branching, and then these little pink lines represent your intercalated discs. And those are the muscle tissue types.